and raised in Alabama, I have to uh, get a, get the, the obligatory roll tide out there. Uh, and, and then second, of course, uh, the go army. Um, uh, just like this year, how many of you watched the Army Navy game Saturday? Okay. What was remarkable during that game for me as a, an educator and a leader, and someone who worked to teach young men and women mental and physical toughness to prepare them, prepare them for combat? was what did not happen. And what did not happen was you didn't hear one comment from any of those athletes all day or the coaches. Nobody complained about the snow. Nobody complained about it being hard or, or tough or, uh, you know, rugged conditions. The announcers talked about that. But what did the athletes focus on? The job at hand, and, and, and as an Army grad, I got to say my hats off to Navy, to, off to Navy, uh, tough for that field goal kicker. But what a great, uh, what a great display! Uh, just going to briefly, I am a member, a member of the Downtown Rotary Club, and, and a former long-term uh, Rotarian uh, in Gainesville as well, in Gainesville, Georgia. And I know the deal about talking too long, so I'll try to be brief and open it up to some questions, but. What, we, what I want to share with you today, I've been asked to share, was the notion of turning boys into men and, and how one builds leaders in the 21st century. And I want to talk a little bit about that and leave some time for, for some questions and discussion. I, I would first tell you that um, a little knowledge about anything is dangerous. And it's been, it's been my, uh, uh, my honor, and, and you heard all those schools I've been to and all that, but... We Alabama boys need lots of training, and uh, it, I was blessed. It was an honor to serve America for 22 years. It's been an honor to be a headmaster now for for this is uh, this will be my 19th year finishing up. Um, but to have the opportunity to come to a place like Bethesda uh, to close my career out, um, uh, my wife Don and I just fell in love with with Bethesda and its mission and what it's about and. Uh, I, I've got to tell you that uh, I'm as excited waking up every day as I ever have been about what we're doing there because uh, we are flat driven by the mission to, to help turn boys into young men of character who are prepared to go on and succeed whether it's in college or in a career or in the military or whatever it might be. So we're very pleased about that. Um, you know the history I think. Most of you uh, that were born and raised here and if you weren't Founded in 1740 by the Reverend George Whitfield. Uh, Mr. Haversham uh, was his key administrator, helped actually locate the property. But you know, you, you talk to the man in charge of the woman who really knows what's going on. Uh, Lady Huntington, back in England, uh, influenced the, the king to actually give the, the uh, 500 acres that are now our main property uh, to Bethesda. She also was the chief fundraiser uh, she made lots of offers that no man could refuse in, uh, in terms of uh, giving money to, to support the orphans of the colony. Uh, but this means house of mercy, and we are still true to that mission, which is teaching boys love of God, love of learning, and a strong work ethic. And I will tell you up front that we take pride in being completely politically incorrect. Um, we teach boys that before you have sex, you should be married. We teach them that before you have a child, you should be a good husband, and you should be committed and trained to be a good dad. And that when you become a dad, you have responsibilities and roles and things that you should play. Uh, currently, about two-thirds of our boys only have one adult in their life. Uh, we have 102 boys today present on campus and a staff of 39. If you want to do the math real quickly, we know all of them. I can tell you which one of them didn't get up Saturday morning to come to the ACT test and what his feeble excuse was and, and why that would be. But, but we're very much teaching boys. Uh, we have mandatory chapel each Tuesday. Uh, we have a voluntary communion every, uh, each fourth Tuesday. Uh, so we work hard on the love of God. The love of learning, uh, we want them not only to be good students, but to love to become lifelong learners. We think that that's really important. Um, and last but not least, a strong work ethic. Uh, 
uh, we really believe that that's, that's what's going to make the difference in success for our young men going forward. Um, as we've thought hard about those three, we've discovered, uh, if you remember the movie, The American President, anybody remember that? Yeah. Remember, that when, remember that movie? And there's a great line toward the end when the, uh, the president makes that comment and says that he's learned that being president is entirely about character. We believe that being a successful young man in American life depends entirely on your character. So what we have done is, is decided that we are going to become a leadership academy. And the niche for a leader for a Bethesda boy, while they might, might not go to Harvard or Georgia Tech, uh, although some will, we hope, but we believe that their character and their ability to be leaders is something that will stand them apart from their peers. So what we've done is developed a leadership development program and it's based solidly on character. So the three things we base it on, uh, and of course I, I'm proud to wear my West Point ring today uh, after, the, after the big victory, uh, but uh, first of all is honor. The notion that a Bethesda boy will not lie, cheat, steal, nor tolerate those who do. Any of you who've been around young people today, after all the things that happen in the news and all the things that happen in Washington and all of the things that go on uh, out there, to, to hold young men responsible for their word is really, is really an important thing. Second, we teach them respect. And there are three kinds of respect. Respect for yourself, to include what you put in your body, whether you abuse alcohol or drugs or who you hang out with, but respect for oneself. Secondly, respect for others. And that one obviously goes without saying, very badly needed uh, in our society today. And last but not least, respect for authority. Uh, it drives me nuts to turn on an NBA basketball game. I can't hardly stand it. Or an NFL game and watch the disrespect with which the athletes treat one another, treat our flag, treat whatever it might be. So we're swimming against the, the, the tide of society trying to teach boys high character. And we understand that, and it's an honor to have a chance to do that. So our leadership program, I just want to be really clear with you that, uh, that we're about, we're not about teaching authoritarian, and in my case, you might think overly military leadership. On the contrary, we're talking about teaching servant leadership to boys, how to serve others, how to serve their school, how to serve their family, and how to serve their community. Uh, we began with a kickoff uh, lecture, a uh, joint one done by our chaplain, Coach Antoine Turner, and yours truly, and we did it talking about the Last Supper and Jesus' decision to wash the feet of the disciples. And that whole notion of serving one's fellow man, serving others, and, and that's there. Um, our boys, a number of them get an opportunity each semester to plan, design, buy the food for, cook, and serve a meal to a homeless family uh, through the First Presbyterian Church. And uh, they get a chance to go do that, and it, and it gets their mind off, uh, off themselves and, and on to helping others. Um, I'm proud to tell you that after the hurricane hit Houston, uh, our Bethesda Student Council boys um, organized a, a drive that produced four truckloads of materials to go uh, to, go to Texas uh, for, for uh, that relief. And a couple of them helped deliver it out there. And we were very, very proud of that uh, and of them. So when you say, how do you do that? What is it that you do to teach boys leadership? Well, first, um, just want to share with you a couple of uh, a couple of books that are interesting. Uh, if you're into boys at all and kind of how boys are different, um, a, a classic was a Kinlan and Thompson's work called R Raising Cain, Protecting the Emotional Life of Boys. Uh, you know, the feminist movement and the self-esteem movement kind of screwed up schools for boys over the years. This notion of we, that we, we want to tell you how special you are and everybody gets a trophy and everybody gets a ribbon and whatever, uh, that's hurt us a little bit. Uh, boys do need to learn how to be tough, but they need to, to be told they're special when they achieve something. 
And, and this book is great talking about how boys are unique in their, their approach toward the world. Uh, Bethesda is a true boys school. We understand boys. When a boy doesn't understand uh, something in Algebra 2 because he forgot what he should have learned last year in geometry, uh, is any boy going to raise his hand and say, uh, Ms. Smith, I, I forgot that from last year. Would you mind covering those principles real quickly for, for me? Boys don't do that, do they? What do they do? They mess with their buddy, right? They might pass gas so everybody will laugh. They might do something, but they're not going to admit their, their weakness or their shortcoming. We've created a school where they have an opportunity because every teacher stays for an hour after school every day. And they have a chance to go, go get tutorial. If they accept responsibility, they have an opportunity to go learn and, and to go get some assistance. Second book that, that's interesting is, is uh, Thompson's classic work called Speaking of Boys. And it talks about how the boy of the species is different. And how, you know, the, the, the classic one, and we work, love working with parents on this, but, but, you know, girls love to get together and do girl talk. They love to get together and, and uh, they, they call it hang out or, or whatever it is. But the bottom line is they love to talk. And they'll talk about themselves and others or whatever. Uh, try asking a teenage adolescent male. So how are you today? How's it going, Sam? Fine. You're going to get the answer fine, right? Okay? Okay? Uh, boys, have, boys and men do things together. They go fishing. They go hunting. They go lift weights. They go run. They, get, they go do something. Dads, granddads, you want to relate to your, to your teenage or young man? Go do something with them. Doesn't matter what. Go, go do something. And last but not least, if you were to say, hey, what's the one thing you, you've read, Mike, in the last couple of years that's affected you? Uh, you've heard a lot about grit, most likely. Angela Duckworth's classic work on grit, uh, which basically says it's not all about high intelligence and high achievement. It's about being a hard worker and about deliberate practice. Uh, one of the great quotes, and, and we've used this in, in what we're about at Bethesda, our potential is one thing. What we do with it is quite another. And my favorite of all is from studying the culture of Finland, who, which Finland, by the way, has probably the best education system in the world. Fall seven, rise eight. Learn, you know, for Alabama, Nick Saban is teaching his guys right now. It's not about the fact that you lost to Auburn. That was yesterday. Let's see how you do against Clemson again. And, and finish and finish strong. So let's talk about the leadership program briefly. What we've done is given boys a chance in the classroom to be assistants to the teacher. We've elected a student council and class officers for what folks believe is the first time in Bethesda history. Uh, our boys, their parents all pay some tuition. Uh, our operating budget is a little over three million. Uh, our tuition revenue is around half a million, so we have to raise that other, other two and a half plus or minus each year. But why do we want the parents to have to pay some tuition? Because we want their buy-in. We, we, you give anybody something free and you've made a mistake. We want, we want them to have to be committed to, to what they're about. But the boys get a chance and they get some leadership instruction, but first of all, they all start off as followers. Sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, follow. If you're going to go work with the cattle, you, you, you learn. You're a, you're a worker and a follower first. Second, once you've got some experience, you've developed some confidence, you become a one-on-one -on -one leader. You become a mentor to someone else. Third, you become a small group leader. You can lead three or four others. Finally, when you're an upperclassman and you've earned the right and, and you've earned our trust, you can be, you might be the head of alumni dorm. You might be the captain of the defense on the football team. You might be the, the chief office manager for the maintenance uh, director helping him with his maintenance department. You've learned systematically how to become a leader. So you put that all together and 
you give them an opportunity to work. We partnered with an organization called the Center for Work Ethic Development out of Denver. And they let us have their materials this year at a reduced cost and have helped us develop our program. And in that, uh, it, they have a program called Bring Your 7A, Bring Your A Game to Work. And our boys each week get evaluated by their work mentor, a member of our staff, on the seven A's. And see if these sound familiar. What do you need to do to seek, gain a good job, and keep it and be promoted? We, they get judged on attitude, attendance, both being on time and consistency, accountability, their appearance, uh, how accepting are they of following instructions, um, what's their uh, overall ambition like, do they, do they try to help things be better and they're part of the school, and last but not least, are they appreciative? Do they appreciate the opportunity to work? And that difference between just showing up and doing it because you have to versus because you believe in it and you're, and you're, you're turned on by the chance to, to contribute, we think is important. And every Friday, every boy gets sat down for a five minute session with his or her advisor and they get given feedback on the seven A's. Wouldn't it be neat if every worker at every company in America got some feedback every Friday? How it's going? I would argue that uh, that, that would be helpful. Um, one last thing for you to know about the new Bethesda, uh, our boys are, are doing incredibly well. A third of our juniors and seniors are in college, dual enrolled in college classes. Uh, they will graduate with enough credits to be almost to their sophomore year. Uh, that's currently 11 of our 33 juniors and seniors put together. Um, I've talked a while and, and been excited. Bethesda is indeed on the move. Our Yates Astro Resolution Run is uh, January 6th, that first Saturday after New Year's Eve. The magnificent Women's Board of Bethesda uh, puts that on, and they're, they're very supportive of the boys and of Bethesda. Uh, this last year, they helped us purchase a new weight room, air condition our gym, and redo the floor for the first time. And we're, we're very grateful for that. But um, uh, you can uh, sign up at Fleet Feet. Or, or take a look at, at, uh, at our website and you can find out how to do that or just come on out that day just for a nice walk. Any questions for me about Bethesda? I know we're getting close to 1.30.